I'm Dan Silvestru, um, and uh, that over there is Gord, and he'll join the talk shortly. So we're here to talk about, it was, the original title was uh, Distributed Parallel Computing over Multi-Machines and Multi-Cores in JavaScript using Node, but I couldn't fit it on the slide. So anyway, so I'm assuming that you guys are here, um, because you know, computing is hard. And we're getting to this point where we've lost the ability to um, you know, just saying, oh, well, my CPU is just getting faster and faster and faster. So it's becoming more of a parallel processing world out there. Um, and so before we jump into who we are, um, and this isn't really a plug, but uh, Gordon and I are both from uh, BitHound. We're sponsoring here. Come chat with us afterwards. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Confuseman and uh, Gord Tanner. Um, and you might know us better from our uh, Cosmonaut survival kits that we've doled out, and I keep hearing the little lasers go off. So thanks. <laughs> Um, so what do we do? And this isn't, again, a plug for our company, but this is why we're here talking about distributed computing. We are here to help you write better code. But to do that, we have to analyze all of your repositories and all of the code in them. And that is a lot of work that needs to be done, right? So kind of a typical problem. Um, you want to run Lint. Um, you have something that's never run Lint before, and this is an actual case. I just, I won't name the project. Um, 7368, right, that's how many linters there were, and it took 29 seconds to run this. Now, if we want to run this over, you know, a thousand commits, and uh, we have multiple, multiple critics or analyzers that we run, uh, this becomes quite onerous. And, you know, some of this processing, if you were to do it sequentially, will take two, three, four hours. And, um, you know, waiting sucks, and we hate it. We're, we're unpatient people. Um, but we have a bit of a challenge in JavaScript in that, you know, we're single-threaded. So how do you go about um, processing many, many, many things um, and still, you know, making things performant? Well, so there's the cluster API in Node. Anyone who use cluster at all? Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, there's a little bit of overhead, but it's, it's kind of nifty because essentially um, it's, you know, um, the process.exec and it just it allows you to spawn processes and can take advantage of all the cores on that one machine um, and that's nice, but that means you just have to buy bigger and bigger and bigger servers that have more and more cores and they cost a lot of money and, you know, for startups that gets expensive. Um, so to the cloud, right, let's, let's go out there and, and use a whole bunch of different machines um, and max all of those out and see if we can get performance to increase and go better, right? Um, so that's kind of what we do, and this is where ZeroMQ comes in. Has anyone used ZeroMQ? Oh, awesome, cool. If you have that installed on your laptops, by the way, you could actually join the demo later. Um, so I, you know, I, I read the description the first time I saw ZeroMQ, and it's like, looks like an embeddable networking library, but acts like a concurrency framework. And I went, wow, that's a whole lot of buzz words, and I don't know what any of this means. So we started kind of looking into it deeper. So this is totally legit. This is off of their manual. So you basically take TCP sockets, you add some spandex, cosmic rays, illegal radio scope, or yeah, radio isotopes from secret Soviet atomic city, and then that all of that stuff together, and you end up with um, zero MQ sockets and really awesome things. So essentially, the sockets, you know, the carry atomic messages. Uh, across multiple transports. Like, that's kind of the key here for us as well. So you can do it in process, inter-process, TCP, multicast. Um, and you can connect sockets, um, well, as many of them as you'd like. And there's multiple patterns that you can then take advantage of, right? There's the fan out, fan in, and we'll, I'll talk about that. That's part of Gord's demo. Um, we can do pub sub, um, task distribution, and then, uh, Obviously, the, the standard kind of request response, request reply. Uh, and this is kind of the, the, you know, 
simple. I, I've got some tasks to be done. I'm going to send it out there. Whoever is out in the cloud um, that is available to do the work will just pick it up, do what they need to do, and come back. Um, the the pub sub, I'm sure all of you are familiar with it. Within Bithound, we use that uh, mainly for all of our stats. So we've got all of these distributed nodes, you know, doing work or being idle or whatever, and we want to understand, you know, what our performance is at the various. So they all just publish their stats, and we have kind of this aggregator that sits there and listens and, um, you know, provides us with our with our stats tooling. Uh, but this is really where all of our work. Um, comes in, and this is the fan out and then fan back in. So what we do is we have batches of work that need to be done. Let's say we have a 1,000 commits, that's about a dozen critics that we need to run. Um, we fan those out, and you can do that in batches, or you can do it all at once. It's up to you. Uh, we do ours in batches really to kind of maintain a, more, a shallower queue depth so we can better utilize multiple requests for repositories. Um, each one of our slaves goes off and does some work. And when it's done, it kind of responds back, and we aggregate all of those results, and we end up with, with what's on our website. So I was kind of a quick run through what Zero MQ is and, and how we use it and how you can go about doing distributed computing. But that was just a theory, essentially, so we can prep for Gord's part of the talk. So I've gone six minutes, so you have an extra four. Giddy up. Nice. Of course I prepped for an extra four minutes. Um, so, when Dan told me uh, we were doing this talk um, and said you're doing the code portion of distributed computing in JavaScript, I thought this is going to be fun. So, he's like, you just need to come up with a really awesome demo. And my mind was racing. I was like, oh, I could do, like, I don't know, like, what about Fibonacci? That's not controversial in the Node community. But that would be boring. So, I, I racked my mind for a long time running different things, and it actually, the idea for my demo kind of came from a ride with my uh, daughter, taking her back from school. She was sitting in the back, and we kind of have a little conversation. It's a good time to catch up with your kids. And she just randomly asked me, Daddy, how many letters are in 10? And being an incredibly common question, I said, three. Why? And so she sits back there, and she goes, well, well if 10 has three letters, and three has five letters. And then we worked it out, okay, well, five has four letters, and four has four letters. That works. <laughs> and I was thinking, this is odd. So <laughs> we, we, worked, we worked out a few more numbers, and, and she's like, oh, what's another number? I'm like, I don't know, like 13. And she's like, oh, that's a lot of letters. And we worked through it, and back and forth, and they, everything kept reducing down to four. And this was such an <laughs> amazing experience. Like, I, I had to take a picture of it because it was this serendipitous exchange between me and my daughter where I'm sitting there thinking, I have to have a compelling, awesome example for distributed processing. And here's my daughter sitting in the back doing word games and number games with me. So that, that is actually my face. My mind was blown that, that this happened. So the key is everything can be reduced to four. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not one to preach a religion to you, but just so you know, there is a real religion, it's on Urban Dictionary, so it's legit, <laughs> called fourism. It's a religion based solely on the worship of the ever cool four, often involving telling tales and giving of muffins. But we're a startup, so you can buy your own muffins. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to create an NPM module called Fourism. Um, I, I created it kind of last week. Somehow 34 people downloaded it today with without me even telling you about it, so kudos. <laughs> um, I have no idea how people are downloading that, but so this is the official launch of Forism for this talk only, and don't ever use it. So for those of you who know about ZeroMQ, if you do have the ZeroMQ libs installed, you can easily inst npm install Forism, and you can participate in this demo. 
Um, it's also the codes on GTanner, Forism. Not that you really want to look at that. But to give you a quick idea of this, so I'm just going to make this bigger because my eyes are old. So I need to create a couple, couple small modules. So first, I need to create a module to like take a number and wordify it, which is a new word for me. So we'll start here and we'll take 10. And that returns me, lo and behold, 10. And because the word, the number four is the greatest four, you will notice that it also returns four. But it, it works up to like really crazy big numbers. 10 trillion, 43 billion, 252 million, 352,356. So that was a fun module. I didn't really write that, so I can't take much credit. I grabbed it off a blog post somewhere. That's the wrong module. Oh, that could have been bad. Um, yeah, so Andrew Hoyer, if you're here, thank you. I didn't have to write that. But it's a really, really fugly looking code that, that does that for me. So we won't look at that ever again. Um, so also, we needed to do the, the little game my daughter played. And I, little did I realize that she was a prophet in this new religion that we're going to talk about, like enlightening us all. So we can take our example 10. I'll pass the word 10 to fourism. And we'll log that, and it returns four. <laughs> now, I know some of you are kind of like, what? So I'm just like, you're just kind of like, huh? So if I just kind of pass in, huh, it'll uh, expand out. And we'll see that little exchange ahead, where 10 has three letters, three has five, five has four, and four has four. And of course, I wanted to play around. I was like, oh, cool, like, let's do that awesome like 13 example. It's also four. Weird. Now, I was playing around with this, and I noticed that there's, there's some ones that take a little longer, like one, two, three, which could be also four. So if I run node talk. So this, this example is really interesting, where 23 has 11 letters. 11 has six, six has three, three has five, five has four, and four has Four. There was seven steps. And seven is really close to four. <laughs> it, it all relates. Because if, if I took seven, that took three steps. And if I took three, we all know that three. I should save the file. Three took three steps. Oh, whatever. I, I thought it would be funny. I didn't actually prepare that. So. That's cool. It's not really a distribute, but it takes a little time. And I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to like fortify all the numbers. So starting off, I, I made this little program. It's really not not a whole lot. So I wordify. I made a utils just to like log log the results. So I'll keep track of my counts. For one to a million, I'm gonna forism wordify the x. Keep track of the turns and this node sample and there was light thank you for so that took about four seconds <laughs> so obviously this is gonna take a long time oh my gosh I am probably going to hell for this talk it took a little time and I was like it's gonna take a while and this is a distributed computing talk so let's kinda go Let's do this first thing. And we all have played with cluster before. So I took the same code. You'll basically kind of see right here the wordify, forism, counts. It's pretty much the same code, except I'm just grabbing the start and end from the process environment. Um, and then when I'm done, I send it back on process. So if, if your, your cluster is, you have a master, and he delegates to his slaves. So I have a little send function where I just kind of fork off a new process. I'm setting start and end, and when I get the message back, I'll call my callback. And just to make this easy to, 
do the synchronization. I'm using the async library, which we all love at BitHound. It's an awesome library for doing callback management. So I just, let's do five million. On my, I, I opted for the cheap CPU on my MacBook Air. So just wait for it. Wait. Obviously, when someone hits our website running this, this religion, 20 seconds, a long time to wait for our response. You see, there's really not a whole lot I can do to optimize this. Like, I could buy a bigger computer, but I'm poor. Um, but we're, we're kind of limited to like how many cores we have. And we could do distributed kind of, like we have like a proxy in front of our like node server and it'll like go to each one. But I will have state. I kind of want to go, I want to do, when you request like the supreme knowledge of the number four, you want to know all the numbers at the same time. So that's, that's where the true beauty of fourism lies. So basically, there's a lot of code here. I just wanted to make it pretty. But at the root of it, you'll, you'll still see, I still have this little thing here. So counts, loop over here, return to counts, and it's called back. And then back on uh, the, the slides, um, where are we here? So all I'm really doing is using the push-pull socket. So 0MQ sockets have basically we're called types. And the types are not really what you would think a normal socket type. A lot of socket libraries would be like, oh, you want your in-process socket or your like TCP socket, your web socket. One of the key components of zero key is you kind of assign like message balancing types. So you have a push socket, which is you can push out messages, and a pull socket, which will pull messages from a push socket. So this, this kind of diagram here is really all I'm doing in this example, where I have a task ventilator where I'll push out these like little batches of a million processors. And I'll have my workers, well, I'll just call pull and then push back to the ventilator. So that's what you're seeing here where I push the result back, pull it on, and then really all I'm doing is um, calling batches push. So pretty much the same code I did in cluster. And there was light. So I'm going to start this guy up. So, so I made, like any good library, there's a command line interface. So we have basically our master and we have our slave. So our master will start up. He'll sit there waiting for people to connect. And we can start up slaves. So I'll go for is a master. So he's just going to sit there prompt for millions. I'll just start up locally. Slave. Okay, so I've, like, because I have four cores on this machine, there are four, so I have, um, now I have eight, because I have some of my other uh, guys from BitHounds joining. So we can actually, if any of you actually happen to install Forism, my IP is, what do we have here? Uh, 192.168.159.4. So we should have more people join. Oh, oh, there, ooh. Oh, wow. There we go. That's distributed computing right now. So that was super cool. So now, where, where is Zool the gatekeeper? OK, I did Zool the gatekeeper. So just for, I've never had 32 cores on this. This is gonna, like, so what the heck? Let's do 20 million. So let's do this. So cross your fingers. So this is going off. You'll see, like, like, your processors are going to get little batches of jobs, like, so the force is with them. They'll kind of go off. We're, we're kind of churning along here. I built massive stats, otherwise known as just waiting. Oh, there we go. So. So that, that's pretty cool. That took 16 seconds, and I just did 20 million of those. So while I, while I, I'm astonished at that, I'm just going to. Let's do like, so another cool thing was 0MQ. So you notice that my master service, um, I just killed this. I'm not starting a server. It's just, a, it's just basically a node command line. And so I killed that entire process. And all these slaves out here in the audience were like, uh, where'd he go? Um, but I, 
I stopped it. Now I just started it up again, and they've all reconnected. And you'll notice that in, in my code, I didn't really do that. All I did was use call connect. So we just connected like on port 1337, replying on 1338. And that's all we did. It's just a TCP socket hidden. But all that crazy stuff, if you've ever done like any socket work where you're like, oh god, the server like disconnected, and I guess I got to reconnect and then get some state back. All that's been handled for us through ZMQ because these sockets are amazing. So I'm gonna I, I'm gonna start. I don't know. Let's go. I don't know. Want to go 100 million? Oh, 1,000 million. That'd be. So yeah, I'm just gonna let that run. 1,000 million, is, that a, is there a word for that? Billion? <laughs> <laughs> so, really that's about it, because Dan uh, was uh, four minutes earlier. I have four minutes left. Um, so, really, as this chunks away, like the cool thing about this, if you, uh, if you are doing any kind of distributed work, think of, as you're designing your applications, rather than thinking of, request response, start trying to think about if there's ways you can just kind of send a message. We're infinitely familiar with how to send messages in JavaScript. Kind of go, send this off, here's a callback when you're done. Um, but think about, send this off, send this group of stuff off, and here's a callback when I'm done. And think of the power if you can have an unlimited number of people out there waiting to basically do your bidding. Wow, that was a minute to do. A billion. That's cool. That was awesome, dude. Actually, to add to that, um, Zero MQ is also not uh, Linux specific, right? So if you've got a whole bunch of work that you need to get done, and some of it needs to happen on a Windows box or you know on a Mac machine, because I don't know. Let's say when we get into analyzing Objective C and whatnot, um, you could totally do that. It's it's just a message, and those slaves that run on those systems will pick it up just like anything else if they know what to do with it. I'll just go process it and respond back. So you can kind of still keep your management and your kind of overall orchestration and node and just get mm -hmm. love JavaScript. So, so that, that's, that's about it. Uh, thank you all. So we are launching our developer preview. This is our pitch part. So if you are interested in helping us build one of the tools that are going to sit there and help you guys build the best software possible, help us help you register for our pre developer preview at bithound.io slash preview. And may the fours be with you. Thank you.